If you've been on my blog before, you probably know that I love Excel spreadsheets. I just wanted to go over a few of the basics for people that aren't very familiar with Excel. I'm hoping that if you can see the basics, you'll still have to probably figure out a few things for yourself, but maybe it will give you a little bit of confidence to be able to use some of the personal financial planning spreadsheets that I provided in the classes. So this is a very basic class. If you're familiar with Excel, this might be something you want to just skip. There might be a couple things in here that might be helpful to you. Um, it just depends on your current knowledge of Excel. So I just really quick wanted to mention why I like Excel so much. And there's a lot of online calculators that can do some of these similar things. I see some really great ones, but I really don't prefer to use online calculators because it makes it more difficult in the future when the inputs change, and they always do, to go back and to have to re-enter all your information and print it out again from this um, website. I just feel like Excel spreadsheets make things so much more, more easy. And also you can edit them and you can edit all the categories and all of the, the columns and the rows and you can really make it customized to your own personal situation. So without further ado, um, here are some of the basics of Excel. An Excel file is referred to as a workbook. So this is similar if you look at a Word file, that's referred to as a document. But Excel, the main difference is that you are providing inputs and that and you're solving problems. And if you think of a physical workbook, it definitely makes sense. So in a physical workbook, you are filling in answers and calculating things, and that's what we're doing here. So just like a physical workbook, you would have a collection of sheets or pages that are bound together and that's exactly what we're doing here with the tabs on the bottom. So the first tab is the annual budget cash flow, annual actual, monthly budget, and then we have all of these sheets that are all create this one workbook. Let's go through some of the basic functions. If we go up to the file tab on the upper left hand corner, we've got the option to create a new blank workbook or um, we can use a variety of templates, some which are good and some which I found are not too great, so use those um, at your own caution or sort through to know what you're getting. I love that in Excel the open tab now includes the recent workbooks and you can pin them to the side, so they have a few that are pinned. And pinning them means that they stay there, they don't go to the bottom even if they haven't been open for a while. So to that to do that, you can hover over this pin to the right of the name and click on it, and that will pin your file for next time. Of course, you have the Save, the Save As option if you want to create a new version, your print options here, Share, Export, Close. And one thing that I found to be really useful for financial planning documents is if you go to Info, the first option here, and Protect Workbook, you can encrypt your spreadsheet with a password. So that's of course really useful if you are putting your information on a USB drive or if you have a shared computer or if you really if you take your information anywhere outside your house if someone even tries to access it they won't be able to get into your file. So to do that you just click on the button and then you enter your password two times and that will activate the protect workbook function. Let's look at some of the worksheet options next. We have on the lower right hand corner the option to zoom in or out, which is helpful um, depending on the data that you want to see to make sure that you can get all the, the information that you need. We can select this percentage number and we can change it that way. It's very simple. And then I wanted to go over some of the views real quick. So this is the normal view that I have right here. It just shows the cells and the rows like you would expect from a default Excel workbook. We can also select the page layout view, and that shows something similar to like a print preview. And the last one is the page break view, which is really helpful if you need to print your workbook. You can drag this around and um, select what you want to be on each page. Going back to the worksheet tabs, if we right click, we have a bunch of options here. We can do insert, and I'll do insert worksheet. 
We can delete that. We can rename it. We'll go ahead and rename it test. It gives us the option to do tab colors. You can tell that that's something that I use all the time. There's a few other options. Um, we'll, we can hide this. And then if we want to, to find that again, we can right click on any tab in the workbook and we can select unhide and select that again and it will bring it right back to where it was. That's really useful if you have created a bunch of versions of things and you have one you aren't really using but you don't want to totally just delete. Another really super useful thing that I use, if we go to the January monthly budget, assume that we wanted to create kind of a generic budget for the whole year or just kind of look at an average budget for most of the months. If we right click on that January monthly budget, I can go to move or copy and I can create a brand new copy of that. And if I select to book new book, it will set that up as its own Excel workbook with just that one tab and then I can edit that separately from this. So we want to make sure that you do select create a copy. If you don't create a copy, it will actually move that whole tab over and take it out of this workbook. So maybe sometimes that would be something you'd want to do. You just need to be careful of that. Let's look at some of the functions with the rows, columns, and cells. This is pretty basic, but if you, I'll show you with the rows. If you right click on one of the rows, you have a lot of the same options. You have insert, delete, you can clear all the contents of an entire row. So this is especially useful, of course, if you have a really big file. Um, you can adjust the row height and then it would be the same for the columns. Hide and unhide. Of course, there's also um, options to copy if we wanted to copy this and if we wanted to paste it to a different row, we could do that. I'm going to delete that so I don't mess up my, my worksheet. Um, so you can see the, the exact same options on the columns here. If you want to look at single cells, you can select on the, those single cells. And you want to be much more careful if you're selecting single cells. If you hit insert on a single cell, you choose whether you want to shift them right or down. Let's select right and you can see why you need to be careful. We've pushed out all this information to the right and now it no, no longer adds up. So there's definitely times that that's useful, but you have to be really careful about what you're selecting when you insert, delete, or um, any of those functions. So if you want to move um, all the data from a single cell, so let's say we have this total, this isn't a great example because we wouldn't want to move this, but if you select any edge of the border where it turns into the, the four arrowed symbol, you can drag it to another cell. So we can take this, maybe we want it one, one line down. You can see how easy it is to drag. You can select multiple cells as well. So if, if you have a whole row that you want to move to another location, you can select all of those and you have that same function. We'll undo that. It's really important to utilize formatting in your Excel spreadsheets. Even if they're just for you, it just makes a big difference in being able to really pick out the data and have it organized. So some of the, the options that I use, most of them are on this Home tab, and they're just very basic. You can select your font. You can select the size of it, make it bold, italics, underlined. Some of the other ones that I've used that you can see here are to select the cell color. So you can, you can change that to whatever color you want. The font color can be changed here as well. And then the alignment of the cells, if you want it centered or left or right justified. A couple really useful things are these wrapped text buttons that allows, as you can see, it has this little explanation. You can make sure that all of your text fits within one cell without having to go to different cells to, to type in a lot of text. You have the merge and center button. If I click that, you'll be able to see how I adjusted that. So it used to be all these cells from A to N. 
If I select them, and now I want them to be all one cell, I can hit the Merge and Center button, and that will include it as if it was just one cell. Let's look at some other formatting. Um, you can tell that I've included all of these numbers with two decimal places. If we select all those rows, we can see by right-clicking and hitting Format Cells, you can see your options here. The default is for everything to just be general with no formatting. Here I've selected the number option. So I, use, I like to have two decimal places, or sometimes I use zero. I like the thousand separator, and I usually use the parentheses for negative numbers. Some other options that might be useful for other things, you can do currency, which is very similar to the number one, but you can insert a, a symbol there. There's date functions. You can customize to the date format you prefer. There's even if you go to special, you can format phone numbers and other things like that. That's really useful to just make it really, really streamlined and look nice. A really cool thing about Excel um, and formatting is that you can very easily kind of copy and paste formatting if you select the formatting that you want and then you select this format painter. It looks just like a paintbrush. So you can select that and then you could go down to another cell and you could just select it and it will format it the same way as the other. Let's look at some formatting options for your entire workbook or worksheet. If we go up to the page layout tab on the top, you can select margins, orientation, the size of your paper that you want to print on, um, the page breaks, lots of things. I like to click on this little arrow. This is how I'm used to doing it. And then you can adjust it to make it smaller or something that I use all the time is if I want for example, this workbook, I really need to be one page wide or it's going to be hard to pick out my totals. So I do one page wide by two tall on this for this option. I've adjusted my margins. I think the, the default is generally about one inch, which I feel like is way too big. You can write in a little header or footer. You can tell that I've, I've added footers in all of my spreadsheets here. If we go back to margins, we can center this worksheet on the page horizontally. You can tell by the little picture if I adjust it. I think it makes it look a lot better for most spreadsheets if they're centered horizontally. Um, vertically is another option. That one I don't use as much. You can print preview it after selecting that. You also have that page layout view, which really helps as well. But So between those, you can really get a good view for the spreadsheets that you wish to print. The real usefulness of Excel, of course, lies in being able to calculate numbers and perform functions. So let's go through a couple of the most common functions in Excel. We'll go to the right of this total here and kind of copy the function that I have listed there. So if you hit the equal sign, that symbolizes to Excel that you are going to be performing a function calculation. We can go up to insert function at the top here. This is the easiest, simplest way to do this and it will show your most recently used ones. So my most recently used one by far is the sum function. So we can hit equal sum, and then we just need to tell it. This looks really confusing, but we're just telling it what to sum. So we'll select, we want the totals of all of these for the year, and just hit enter or OK, and you can tell we have this sum here. So that's the same as this that I had right there. If you select a bunch of cells. You can also get this sum at the bottom. It does the count and the average. So those are two other ones that are the most common ones that I use in Excel. So you can again go to equals, the function, and you can see the average here and the count, and you can put that in one of the cells. If you want more, more options here, you can select them by category, or you can just type in a description. So if you want the present value function, for example, when we're looking at 
um, the time value of money data, you can just type that in and then it will help you to a little bit more with functions like that to, to show what the, where to put the rate, the period, the payment, and um, the type, which would be beginning or ending of the month. So Excel, it, it seems complicated, but it's really actually quite simple to use. And most likely there's just a few basic things that if you learn them, it will be extremely useful. There's a couple of other really useful things that I use in Excel all the time. So the first one is the find and replace function. So if you hit control F, I'm sure this function is probably somewhere at the top too, but I'm not sure where. And then I've typed in January. You can find all of the, the text January and also in all the formulas where it says January. So you can see it's, it'll go through all of them. And in the January column, it will be basically every cell. So the replace part of it, if you go to the replace tab, we could go through and we could replace them all with February or March. So if we wanted to do all of them, we could select column B and we could hit replace all. And that would replace them all with March. So that'd be really useful if you were creating this workbook or another one and you had a January tab similar to what I do and you can update quickly for each tab with the different months. So you can see how fast that was rather than going in each and every cell and updating your information that way. So there's a lot of um, ways that that can be used. Another big one is um, it's, it's not so applicable in this spreadsheet, but you can sort data. So if you go to the data tab up here and then you can just quickly sort A to Z or Z to A, or if you select this, you'll have a bunch of other sort options, especially if you're working with numbers. That's really useful.